Okay, the uh, minutes are not totally ready for May 14th, so we'll skip over that. Public hearing. We have a local law introductory B, telecommunication facilities. Uh, I'll have our town attorney, Herb Cully, just go over that briefly to explain what it is. When uh, we enacted the new uh, telecommunications uh, facility statute, uh, we provided that all co-located structures, even if they were on an existing tower in a commercially zoned area, had to come in for a site plan approval. Um, at that time, I think it was our intent that we only wanted to make towers that were co-located in a residential or within 750 feet of a residential uh, have to go through that site plan approval process. As you recall, we had a proposal where there was a thought there was going to be a tower put on a water tank on the top of Sanger Ave, which was in a residential district, and that uh, the people could just come in and administratively get a building permit from Joe. Uh, as a result of that, we amended our statute, and I think we went further than we had expected because certainly if they're co-locating in a commercial uh, area, uh, I, I don't think the intent was they'd have to come back for a site plan approval. So this would amend our statute to indicate that if it is co-located on an existing structure and that that structure or tower is not in a residentially zoned area or within 750 feet of a residentially zoned area, that they could just come into Joe and get a building permit. Um, we've had a couple of situations where there is an existing tower. One, I think, was at one of the hospitals, and they want to just basically repair it and possibly enlarge it slightly, and rather than have to come to a full site plan approval, this would be done administratively. OK. Um, that explains the law that we're looking at. The public hearing is open. Anybody that would like to get up and comment, either for or against this law, uh, you have three minutes to get up and state your comments. Don Back from Mallory Road. How much is the site plan review fee? And Joe, do you know? Um, first, the uh, fee is $500 plus parking spaces, which would be applicable. The final site plan review is $250. Are you talking a thousand dollars more or less? Okay. Thank you. Any other comments for or against this local law? No comments. They have a motion to close the public hearing. Make the motion. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, gentlemen, would you like to take action on this at this point? No, we don't have the, don't have the planning, planning board's board. recommendation. We've got the county. We've well, got the county and everybody else, but not the planning board on this one either. Okay. We will hold off on this until we get the planning board recommendation, which hopefully will be the June meeting. Okay, moving on. Uh, reports of town officials, standing committees. Uh, Councilman Woodland, the town clerk committee. We have uh, the Deputy uh, Chu uh, Clerk, uh, Rebecca Alpe, has now satisfied her probationary period, uh, effective on Monday, June 2nd. We're looking to make an adjustment to the hourly wage of 1107 payable bi weekly. I'll make that as a form of motion. Second. Second that. Second by Jim. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, uh, well, we're already down to the town attorney. Uh, anything else by the councilman before we get on to uh, Jim or any other councilman? Uh, I don't know why this is matter submitted. Oh, councilman, okay. Jim, Nelson. Yeah, um, as you guys know, we, we uh, for Cheryl Lane, we started a uh, monitoring the stormwater as there were some issues with uh, sewage and so forth with some of the residents' homes. Uh, last year. So um, you guys installed a uh, device that monitors the flow. Rick has been monitoring that and the flow has been relatively in okay. compliance. We've had no issues. The amount of water we've got, there's been no issues down there whatsoever. 
So the it's, next, it's your bigger storms like we had in 2011 and 2013. And I still say we haven't had an issue for that to backflow from the county, but everything up to now, and I've had no phone calls from the storms we've had in the last couple of weeks of anybody having any issues with water. Because right, a, a week ago Friday or so, that was the, the they biggest. Had no phone storm. calls whatsoever from there. But it's still in place. It's still monitoring for I believe another maybe another two or three weeks. It was, it was into like the end of June. End of June. We, we had discussed, and it's the second uh, item, is surveying, because we surveyed the, the street. We're going to survey possibly uh, Hoffman, Bolton, and Rupert. We still want to do that. I had it all TV'd. Uh, yeah. National Waterman came in and TV'd it and found no issues up in those lines up going up through there. But in regards to like the downspouts and so I haven't done this today. I got to I got to say if I haven't done it. I mean, should we do that and and, uh, and gather that? I mean, would it be? We can, but like I say, I've had we've had no issues. Just a question: Can yeah. would it be prudent to extend that monitoring, Rick? If we haven't had any issues, but we've got a history of issues during heavy. We could, we, could well, extend, we could extend Would it, it be prudent mm -hmm. to extend that monitoring and uh, see if we can catch it when <coughs> cellars are flooding? Well, we, we've had it through the winter. We've had it through the early spring thaws. And the storms uh, up to now, we can extend it with your, you know, with your guys' permission. It's not a, not a problem. Well, like I say, everything that we've had, and we've had some good rain. Not okay. nothing like the big storms, but we've had some good rain. But we haven't had any cellar issues there. <clears throat> Nobody... Nobody's called me and complained about any cellar issues. How many did we used to get? Was um, it it's, a si it's a south side. We got um, maybe a half dozen dozen or so. Yeah, maybe. about a dozen. And it's not maybe. storm water, it's sewage. Well, yeah, that's just right? caused from the storm Right, no, I know that, I know so. that, but I mean, it's not, uh, that's why I think it might be prudent to extend it if we can so that we catch it when the, when the cellar is uh, impacted. How much would it cost us to go to the, like the end of August? Probably another couple thousand, 2,500. I thought we did that though. I thought it was, I thought we did talk about that. I, I can look, I may be wrong, but I thought okay. it was like the end of June. Because that got us through winter, spring. Uh, I can make sure if it's not, if, I could be wrong. But yeah, if it's not, if it's only a couple thousand dollars the board, why don't we go to the end of September? Uh, right. That way, I would think that whatever storms we're going to get are going to happen between now and the end of September. We okay. won't get anything after that, I don't believe. Uh, why don't you go through, have them go through that, Rick, see okay. what, what we do. Okay. Right. Rick, yep. also the issues we get up on Middle Settlement with the same issue, we haven't had those either, have we? Uh, with the water? We did have an issue at the, la the last storm a couple weeks ago with the water to go over the state highway. Okay. Uh, but Fawn Crest, since we've done the work, is has been fine. No no issues there since we went in there and dug that ditch out. In the yards of Middle Settlement where we used to get back up there? Right, that one that, individual. Yeah, yeah and that's been ta that was taken care of. Okay. Okay. Jim, you want to do that survey with the residents up there? Is that with the, the count, is it the county engineers we're talking about? Would that give them more data? To it would give them some more data, but it, within the, I don't know what the period of time is, but by the end of this year, I believe that survey is going to go out to every resident in town of North and the county. By when, Rick? I'm sorry. I, I, probably by the end of the of this year. Is that what, is that? We is just that, did it. We did it ahead of time for Cheryl Lane because we had it. And we right. sent it out to those residents ahead of time. But it is going to go out countywide, I believe. By the county or by us? Uh, or by the county? Okay. <laughs> and, and you think the county's going to do it? Yes. You want to wait for the county or you want us to do it? Do we know how many homes are up in those three streets? <laughs> approximately? I'd say probably 65 to 75 houses, those three streets. At least, Hoffman, well, Bolton. What is this? Just a letter asking them if their downsparks go into the. If they have, if they have sump pumps, if they have uh, drains in their yard, if there's roof leaders go into the sewer or the sewer, or if they go into the stormwater, it's a voluntary survey that they. 
it's a nice document. It has you know color photographs and so forth. And, um, I know we got we made about a third back from. When we, we got a third back from Cheryl Lane. So how many people said that they were pumping their storm water into the sanitary sewers? It's not too many. <laughs> well, I don't think there's a lot of people don't understand the issue. No, they what don't. this survey reflects, right? And what the impact is going to be down the road, right? I don't have a problem with it. Um, if you want to send them up, I mean, sixty. You're talking thirty bucks, probably in postage or something like that. I don't have a problem. I think it's your area. I have no problem with it. I think there's more than 60, <coughs> probably closer to 100, I'll bet. Yeah. Well, even at that time, yeah, you're talking. I said, we'd, I said we'd do it just for peace right. of mind, and right. and then we can get, you know, back with the engineers and see if there's any. Well, for the cost of it and getting it done, I, I, I think it's well worth it. You want to head that up? I, I, <laughs> we did that through you, right? You did the... I did it. You want to work with work, 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 work. All right. What else we got? Okay. You're done? I'm done. Okay. Paul. Well, yep. Um, as you know, we did the Mud Creek project last year. Um, you know, we fixed a lot of the issues there. We cut down a lot of trees. And uh, we were going to try to get a fence for everybody just to help them out with uh, a few things. Um, they're, they're getting a lot of light in their bedrooms and their living rooms uh, due to the uh, traffic that's dead on from across the street where New Chipotle's is going. And um, also, too, there have been a lot of problems with kids and stuff running through the yard, running through theirs, going to Carolyn Courts. And there's a lot of garbage, too, that's, that's building up over there from, from the dumpsters there in those businesses. And it's winding up blowing all over their lawns and uh, into the creek. So um, I was looking to see if maybe we can put the put the fence up this year for them and use the money that we had left over. Plus, I know Chipotle came in and they're actually adding another additional two lights plus more traffic there uh, that's going to be going in and out of that entrance. Maybe we can use that towards. Uh, well, any lights from mm -hmm. Chipotle's isn't. That fence isn't going to be high enough to block it. I mean, it only goes six feet. So um, that's not going to block the place. Do we have any money left over from there, Sergeant? There's $2,700 right now. Okay. But I thought there was something brought up at a previous board meeting a while ago. I don't really remember that that was going to be used for something. I don't really. It was a while ago. But there's, right now, there's $2,700 left. Okay, so we paid some, because it, it was for the last time. The last time we made a payment uh, from there was in <coughs> December of 2013. Okay. To, um, yeah, mostly to, on a Hanson. Okay, so it mostly got more rock then? So. Okay. Sorry. Well, we talked about fencing this, and I thought we were going to do something on this last year, weren't we? Didn't well, we happen. were. We were all set. We got the, the estimates and everything, and then what happened was we, we ran short on the, on the money <coughs> end of it. But then Chipotle came in, so there was more <coughs> mitigation money there, so I thought maybe we could use some of that, because they're going to build more traffic across the street when they're coming out of there. <laughs> ain't going to work. Uh, we don't use mitigation fee on private property. Um, anyway, um, $2,700. <laughs> Board, what do you want to do? I mean, we got $2,700. I don't know how. What, do you still have the bids from that fencing? Yeah, we got them down at the town garage. They're were, they were around like $8,400 to like $9,400. $9, and that was the complete fencing from the area that's not fenced right now. There's no trees, anything like that. It's, it's right, they're right across the street from the uh, entrance where we put the new light. So we're going to put this up by the creek there. Yeah, on, on the not on not on the actual residence property, but we're going to it's going to be on the on the commercial end of it. Is that it? Do we have a right one? Yeah, I really can't put it there because we don't own that land. I don't think we do. Do we? Which you found out where they redid the creek? Yeah, yeah, right there. On the, on the commercial drive side. On the commercial drive side, you put the fence to alleviate the garbage too going in the, in the creek. Because it wouldn't, it wouldn't really 
Dr. Bannister going on the property. I don't think we own that property. And, and the only reason I say that is because people or, have been trying to develop there, and they're, they're talking that they own right up to the creek. Didn't Tobias, get, wasn't that Tobias that gave us some kind of an easement or an access agreement? Rick, well, that was, to get to, that was to get to the creek. Tobias gave us an easement there to do that work. <clears throat> to uh, change the creek? To change the creek. So he's right up to the creek edge? That's his property? Yes. So it would have to go on to the, the other side. Well, I'm, I'm sure the resident, I, I can speak with them. Yeah, because, no. of the, you know, because the issues you brought up, obviously, are going to change because that's higher ground on the, on the commercial drive side. Uh, so some of that light would more be diffused if it were over there. Right. Um, putting it on their side, I don't know how much it's going to diffuse the light. Second of all, uh, it'll probably stop any garbage from going over there or kick it back into the creek. Right, well, let's Send it yeah. down to Yorkville. <laughs> Could you do shrubs? Uh, shrubs or something? Well, then, then the, the thing we took the trees out was yeah. we had issues of stuff going into the creek and, and you know, and the, uh, and the dirt deteriorating and the bushes going in there, and, and at least with the fence. And, well, plus, there's don't... no maintenance to it either. You know, because it's a vinyl fence, there's no painting. You know. What if we were to get three easements? It's going to take three easements. There's three property owners there. You got the Brownwood State Farm. You have. Um, <laughs> are you they're going to give us an easement. <laughs> it's out of the question. I'll tell you right now. It's uh, Raspberry, and then the building next to them is what the three buildings that, would, that property would entail, or entail. You'll be lucky if you get two of those owners to, to even take your phone call. I won't mention who they are. Yeah, the lights shining in. We didn't disturb the brown property or raspberries. I thought he's talking about down further. No, right across from that area. On the other side of the creek. Yeah. Those houses we took the fence yeah. down. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Right. She, she lives, and her backyard is right where the, the Bias's property is. Yeah. Right there. behind. That's where right the problem behind. is, isn't it? Right here. If you look, if you look on the phone right there, like that's yeah. their backyard. Oh, you can I'm see sitting, right through. You can see right through to where the actual all the traffic comes for the light. Oh. I see that. Right where the Chipotle's is between Canaris. Right there when the traffic comes out, those three houses get beamed with right. lights. That's a lot further down than raspberries or brown. But that's, that's I mean, two, I'm, I'm kitty corner from uh, Brown's <clears throat> on the other side. I'm the next building over. See, either way we look at it, I think we're looking at putting it on the residential property. And we talked, I, I thought we talked about doing that last well, year. Could we get a variance to make the, the, the fence higher? I mean, can we, can we add, because the, the fence down the street that's where Verizon is and Rite Aid is above six foot. It's actually, I think it's like nine and a half feet when we measured it. I don't think the municipality, uh, her, I look for his support, but uh, I don't think the municipality has to abide by that. We're not restricted by it. Okay, so then we can make a, we can make a higher fence that's, that's there. If we make a higher fence, that'd help out a lot. Because then you, less people are going to try to climb over, too. Because you know? that's what the problem is. I think they get like five, six incidents with police reports down there. You know, people running across their, their lawn. Get a quote them. on it. See what you come up with. And then the board will take a look at it. Okay. See where we go. So I'll get three quotes for next, uh, next board meeting. I think the other issue, too, is I know the planning board looks at light pollution, but this is an issue over there, traffic lights, right. vehicle headlights, and then the, the, the new lights that are going in for Chipotle, uh, are they shielded in some way so it just lights the parking lot and, and doesn't impact uh, the residents across the road? But, uh, I think that's the bigger issue. So we See, I don't know if they propagate are. propagate this at every, every time they put a new light up or well, a new entrance. I went down there about 9.30 at night. And maybe the lights are shielded a little, but it's still it's like a stadium out there for you know for their backyards because again there's no light there at all. Everybody's ready to go to bed, and all the light comes from across the street. So I, I don't know if it's shielded. I think it's a planning board issue as much as it is ours. I mean we've got to mitigate the current problem, yeah. but uh, the planning board needs to look at it a little harder. 
But isn't part of it from when we redid the creek and took trees out and things like that? Yeah, there were some bushes and shrubs. Yeah, there's there. bushes yeah. And, and shrubs yeah. that, that were there before. That right, that, that blocked just, some of it. Right. I don't know if they were that high to block out what, what Paul's talking about. I think you may, you know, you can talk to residents, but they may not want an eight foot fence in their backyard. Right. Across the creek is a different issue. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. I, I, that's what I'm Well, wait a minute. Let, let's hear. I would not want the fence in my backyard. Right. You wouldn't? No. Oh. No. I and I thought, I, I wondered how they were going to do this if Mr. Tobias owned across the creek. But at the time, I also owned three feet across the creek. I don't know what's happened to that since the new uh, area was made because I wouldn't mind if they put that on my property over there. But I don't know if my property's there anymore or got scooped up with the bulldozers. Yeah, actually all the residents own on the other side of the creek. But isn't that in the creek? I mean, if you're talking three feet, that's still got to be in, in the creek. Well, it's, no, it's over the where from no, the water it's not was. The land. Yeah, it's actually land up three feet of the land. <coughs> the commercial the property area. only abuts the creek. It doesn't extend into the creek. In other words, the right. residents own the other bank. The, right, correct. Mm -hmm. The side of the bank or on top of the bank? Because there's a difference. Well, I, I don't know. No, they have like a four or five foot. There's like a walkway area next to the creek that they own the land part. On that's the commercial there. drive side of the bank. On the commercial bank. drive side of the bank. Right. That's, that's where they go? That's yeah. where the fence should go. Right. And also but, the buildings across the street, I understood several years ago now, nothing was done, but those lights are so high, I could actually cook a whole dinner in the middle of the night without turning out a light inside of my house. Well, the first thing I think we have to do, though, is find out exactly where your property is, okay? If you own property on the other side of the creek, which I was not aware of, I thought that was owned by... Tobias and by a bike on the other side, on a commercial drive side. Well, if what you're saying they own three or four feet over there, that's a different story. So I think we need to find out where, where the residents' property extends to. Yeah, because when, when I went out, I got the easements for across the street also to actually cut those trees because they were the, the residents' trees. They were at the commercial. The commercial stopped at the bank and went over like maybe a foot and a half or so. And there was one person that had a survey, and that's how we found that out. So, like, but you're saying on the other side? Yeah. So here's here's they Royal Brook. Three or four feet. So this is Royal Brook Lane, and then right. here's the creek going. Right. They actually the the residents from here own on this side of the creek right here. They own about feet. three four feet out uh -huh. to where the actual <clears throat> bank is that drops off. They they actually own because I I had a survey and they all everybody agrees. You mean on the top of the bank? No, 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 yeah. we're, we're the, we're like plateaus, and then some of it went to the top of the bank because it veers off as it, as it grows. But we've also altered that right. creek line. Well, no, we, never, we didn't do that. We actually put a, a second, a, a tributary okay. over by Tobias's property okay. on Tobias's property. So we didn't property. alter the creek? <laughs> no, we never touched the creek. We never changed configuration or anything. Do you know where this property line is, Rick? There, there, there was a stake when we, we, we Surveyed Tobias's land, so we knew where we were. There oh, was yeah. a stake right there in the corner of Tobias's and the State Farm. You want to take a right over there? You and I will go over yes. Paul if you want to come. Yes. Yeah, we'll right. take a right over. And the, the first thing we've got to do is find out exactly where your property is, ma'am, and then from there we can make a decision as to you know where the fence can go, what it can do, and then we'll come back for the proposal for you and your neighbors. Okay? But we'll try to do whatever we can. Is there any way you can get some of the owners of those buildings to lower those? I thought they were supposed to lower those lights. No. As long as they're not in violation of our code, they, you know, there's nothing we can do oh. unless they voluntarily want to do it. But I don't know. I was um, told that a while ago. I, did, I, didn't I don't know. You know, what, what we could do is uh, Go over and take a look at it. I mean, see, we'll see where these things are actually directed. Maybe Paul and I will go over uh, in the evening sometime, see exactly where these lights, how they're pointed. If they're pointed directly at your backyard, let's say, or close to it, we could go over and they could point them down a little bit. Okay. Like we did with Wedgwood. Any new development? That's got to be an item on the Yeah, sure. But currently, at least we could go over and see where, where those lights are hanging. Okay. But, okay.
Okay. All right. So do you, do you want me to get up to the survey from Rick, and I'll also get the three well, you go over. You and I and Rick okay. will go over, right. and we'll take a look and see where that stake is and see what kind of land we're looking at and whether uh, a fence could be put there, and if so, you know, is it going to help the residents on the other side? Right. Okay. Okay. And then we'll come back to the board and, and go from there. Okay. Dave, the planning board always does no, you know, lighting and detail. I, I know they do. Yeah. I know they do. But no, they're always very concerned. <coughs> but I think this is a little bit of uh, maybe community needs to look at a little harder, particularly in this area. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's lit up pretty good. I mean, it looks like a stadium back there because, there's, again, there's no light of Royal Brooklyn at all. And then there's all the light from across the street, and the trees are gone now. Oh. So it's 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 really like a stadium. Because right. I, I sat in next door to Mrs. Wilson's <laughs> living room, and I mean you didn't need lights on, and you had better light than I do at my home with my light on. So it's well, we'll go over and take a look at it, Mrs. Wilson. We'll come back at the June meeting if you want to come down, uh, or we Paul and I or one of us could come over and discuss it with you and once we go over and see where we're what anytime. We're Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, okay, before we move on to uh, my items and Herb's items, anything else by the, the board members? Okay, moving on. Uh, gentlemen, you have a copy. We went to, uh, with regards to the contract for the highway and the um, parks, as you know, we went into negotiations several years ago with the union. Uh, we came to an impasse. We went to a mediator. Uh, the mediator at the time listened to both sides. He could come. He, after listening to both sides, he could not come up with a recommendation. He, he just said there was an impasse uh, and, and didn't even give us a recommendation. Uh, from there, um, we proceeded to what was called fact finding. Um, we did receive a report. Gail has a copy of that report. Um, what this does is it basically uh, goes to a uh, independent third person, if you will. They look at all the facts involved between the town <coughs> as uh, briefs were given by the town and by the union. Um, and then they provided a uh, recommendation this is not a binding recommendation. This is not binding arbitration. Uh, this is merely a recommendation. Um, in going through this, um, what was found was when we presented ours in our position, it was a position that the town had uh, at its last uh, negotiating meeting, uh, which encompassed a 15% contribution on health insurance. Uh, the union's position at this point is zero contribution on health insurance. Uh, the one concession they were willing to make was going from the Supreme uh, Health Insurance Plan to the Select Plan. Uh, however, uh, in reviewing the Select Plan, the cost of that plan is still uh, significant, significantly higher than the cost of any other health plan that we have here in the town, which includes two other unions, the PBA and the Dispatch. So it's still an expensive plan. Um, that being said, the uh, fact finder did go on to propose, uh, make a proposal. That proposal, and gentlemen, you all, all have a copy of, the, of this, uh, is basically uh, essentially the same proposal that we made to the union um, probably two or three years ago, which they declined to accept. Uh, at this point, I believe that we were continue to be in an impasse. Uh, my recommendation to the board is at least for the 2011 year, which is uh, uh, the latest year in question here without a contract, that we proceed to take the terms of the current contract and apply those to the 2011 year and consider that to be the contract in place for 2011. In order to do that, we would need to have a public hearing. Uh, that public hearing I would ask to be scheduled at our next board meeting. Uh, at which time anybody can get up and give comments with regards to this document, uh, either pro or con, and pro or con with regards to uh, my proposal, which is to take the current terms of the union contract and apply that to the 2011 year. Um, questions? Or Make a motion we uh, schedule a public hearing for the next meeting. 
Second. Second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Yes. I will call you in a moment. Okay. Um, second of all, uh, we had some um, some time ago. There was the question brought up. Actually, last year, some time ago, there was a question brought up with regards to. Uh, sewer charges, sewer district charges uh, being uh, uh, applied to nonprofit organizations. Um, as you know, we changed that for the current taxable year. They are not being charged for that. Uh, however, we did with the board's approval go out and I ran, got an opinion from uh, an independent attorney, uh, the first attorney. Um, did not work out. I went to a second attorney, uh, and basically what he said was uh, he agreed that we could not tax those people. However, in his opinion, he said that uh, under the circumstances, uh, we were not obligated to refund any of those payments. So uh, I've asked our town attorney to notify the people who have uh, filed notices of claim to let them know what our attorney has said. Um, also to notify the county that based upon opinion of council <coughs> that in our opinion they should not uh, provide any refunds uh, on behalf of these taxpayers. Uh, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to entertain them. Uh, I do not have the letter with me. However, if anybody wants to stop into my office, I'll be happy to show it to you. Okay? Um, other than that, we have uh, Ray Hill Trail. We have an issue uh, that was brought to my attention uh, a week or two ago with regards to the current contracts with Lochner Engineering. Um, as you gentlemen know, and if you don't know, we have two contracts with Lochner. One is with regards to the inspection of the uh, trail, which is approximately $126,000 in value. Uh, they are asking for in addition to that contract of $5,000, which covers the cost of an insurance policy, which they had to have uh, to cover their uh, uh, responsibility, liability uh, on the railroad crossings. Um, additionally, on the other end, uh, with regards to their work uh, on the right-of-ways, et cetera, uh, they are asking to uh, have an increase of $10,750. Uh, that contract currently stands at $18,500. Um, they're asking for an additional $10,750 on this. Um, I met with Dave Ficini from Lochner, along with Rick and Herb and Mike Jeffrey. Um, <laughs> and I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, that's why I asked Dave to come here tonight. The responses I got as to why this was needed, I did not find satisfactory. Um, so instead of just giving my opinion of what transpired at that meeting, I asked Dave to come down and let him provide to you uh, what he feels is the reason why these additions need to be made to the contract. So instead of me trying to interpret this, I will let Dave, Dave, you want to come up? Sure. Uh, and tell you why these costs are needed. Pat, uh, yes. our contract is for 126000 That's for the inspection. There's two contracts. Right. Okay, so that's the inspection. Right. Mm -hmm. And the 18000 is for? The 18000 basically deals with work with regards to the right-of-way right acquisitions, uh, meetings with concerning construction, et cetera. And Dave, you could probably explain better as to what that, that 18000 other contract is if I didn't give it the whole thing. You could have a seat if you want to. Sure. Okay. Um, I guess we can start with a $126,000 contract that Mr. Kuzinzi, the supervisor, supervisor mentioned. Um, the rail trail requires a railroad crossing that's near the McCraith property. To be on the railroad right of way, they require a right of entry permit. That permit has a requirement for a color railroad liability protective insurance, specifically for the railroad, to be on the railroad. So anyone working on the railroad, the town, the consultant, us, the contractor is required to purchase that insurance. And that's the amount of 
<coughs> so that's it. Five thousand dollars request <coughs> is for the um, insurance. And that's only a, a two-year insurance policy or one year? It's policy? a one-year policy. Um, we actually did. We anticipated going to construction in 2013, a portion 2013. So we purchased it both for the design purposes, which we had to access our property, as well as, um, and I should say design purposes, but getting to construction, as well as construction itself. So that's a one-year policy that I let that lapse because I didn't want to renew it until we were at construction. So that, that's the previous policy purchased, and then once we get to, once the town gets to construction, we will require it again. And that's five thousand dollars a year for that policy. Twenty-five hundred a year. How uh, can you bid this at one hundred twenty-six thousand? How do you miss the railroad crossing and the need for insurance when you look at uh, the scope of the project and the fact that you're going to be doing the inspection? Yeah, I think the railroad has been kind of. They've been working with the town in. There's, there's a number of fees associated with the railroad, including right of entry permit fees, which are, I think, $1,700, $2,000 in that range. The railroad indicated they were waiving a number of things, including a right of entry permit fee. So we took that as those fees were going to be waived, which those were, but they were not waiving the requirement for the insurance. So uh, I guess you can term that as an oversight. It was. Again, in the, the railroad, trying to assist with the town, waiving some fees, that's how we interpreted it, and working with the railroad to get the right of entry permit, that's where it came to light that they are not waiving that particular need for that insurance. All right, let me get this clear, because I'm not sure that I'm clear on all the way. Mm -hmm. $2,500 will get you one year. Correct. And you bought one year. We did. So you still have $2,500 in the original contract to buy another year. That's what I was trying to say. We did not have that in the original contract, because as I was trying to explain Mr. Reynolds, with the railroad waiving the right of, excuse me, entry permit fee, which is in there a lot of the end, they indicated with waiving that fee. We took that, that there were waiving fees associated with the right of entry permit, which they are. However, there is a requirement as part of the right of entry permit to purchase the insurance. That insurance they're not waiving the requirement for. And, and you're ask, actually asking to buy two years? Yeah, the previous year that we purchased and then... In oh, construction. you want us to... <laughs> okay. All right, now I got you. Yeah, just, yeah. All right. just a question. Did, did right. you know there was a railroad involved before? Oh, yes. We knew the railroad right. was involved. We were coordinating with the railroad. That was in our scope of work to assist the town and get a right. right of entry permit. Us obtain a right of entry permit. The contractor, whoever we hire, will need a right of entry permit. Again, there was correspondence from the railroad to the town indicating that the railroad was going to waive fees associated with the right of entry permit. So we knew the railroad was involved. Right. The correspondence from the railroad said they were going to waive. But who fees. picks up the insurance, though? Don't, don't you guys do it, doing the whole project for 126000 But And that's what I'm indicating. I didn't include additional fee for the purchase of the insurance. Right based on previous correspondence from the railroad saying they were going to waive the fees. Which again, they waived the fees, but they didn't waive the insurance that's within the right of entry permit requirement. It's pressure what the railroad get the money. Pardon? It's what the railroad pays hey. the cost. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, I mean, they're well, the ones that are they're, they're 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 Yeah, but work. Well, they, yeah, that's what I don't understand. Because yeah. the insurance has nothing to do, like permits are separate from insurance, so the permits are from them, but they don't, they're you know, the insurance, you still need insurance to work, it, so. That's correct. Right. We, we have our general well, when you, professional. When you know that up front, though, that you would need insurance regardless, because they can't waive insurance. Well, again, we have the correspondence indicating they were going to waive the fees associated okay. with the right of entry permit. If I misinterpreted, then that could have been the case, but that was based on the correspondence. So that's why I didn't include those costs for that insurance basis. So, so how much left at $126,000 we owe? Well, we haven't, we haven't got it as a construction inspection. So you haven't done anything yet? Yeah, other exactly. And we've been so why don't you just save the five thousand into the hundred and twenty six and call it a day? Uh, no, I'm serious well, that's though. What that's what he's doing. That's what he's saying. No, so you want another five thousand on the one twenty six? Yeah. 
I'm, I'm saying add the, yeah. yeah, add the five thousand and the one twenty six for the job that you're doing. You're making hundred points. Included in them. Yeah, included in there. Because then we'd have to probably rebid all this, right? We wouldn't have to rebid it, but we'd have to find a place for that where we're getting that five right. thousand. Right. Or we can rebid it and try to get it for one hundred twenty six thousand. You could rebid it. <laughs> I mean, so I I, that's my explanation. I think it's a valid request. I understand. Yeah, if you have more questions, I'd be more happy to answer them. Um, again, I think there's an I mean, impression, just, impression that we, well, I don't want to get the problem. We don't make a huge profit, so 5% or $5,000 is actually a, it's an expense that we have. And it's a request for the town board to consider it. Can we, can we hold that and talk about the other two? I mean, I think it, it uh, the, yeah, the eighteen thousand additional ten seven. What is that? Yeah, and I completely. That's another question. As I'm here, it's that's a large percentage of what the original contract value was. Um, I don't know what history I need to go into or you want me to go into. Um, so the original contract to assist the town in the town's purchasing that the that the project was actually designed by the new state deal mm -hmm. department of transportation. Um, to satisfy the town's requirements as well as to get the construction, the towns need to purchase a number of right away to, to construct the project. Um, as a mediate and assist in getting that right away purchased, um, as well as prepare a bid document, which will a contract will bid on to build the bridge as well as the paving. Prepare a construction management plan, which is a sort of federally funded project, so that there's strings attached with funding sources. They require a construction management plan, etc. So that's what that scope work involved, the eighteen thousand um, dollars. The duration of getting the right of way for it has been very extensive. We're actually going at twenty one months, I think plus to date. Um, so there's additional coordination I've been doing with uh, Rick and Mike and Herb. Thankfully they've been very patient and, and, and agreeing to meet and try to push and get this process done. So there's been a host of meetings what we've been having to ensure that these right away is get into place. Um, with a bid document, again, we anticipated construction in 2013. It was a very reasonable estimation that we would be going to construction in 2013. Right away has not allowed that to occur. So as part of the original um, Scope of work is prepared the bid document. That's been prepared. I need to submit that to the Department of Transportation. They need to review it. I need to provide time for them to review it, which could be, it depends on what their workload is when they get the things. So that's been done. I need to, and that was done in 2013, so in May of 2013. That's prepared based on a host of, again, there's federal monies involved with this, because those are a host of requirements that the feds require are in the bid document. Um, those are not stagnant, those change, they get updated. The specifications to which projects get built, they need to be built to the New York State DOT specifications. That again is not static, that changes, it changes three times a year as they update the standard specifications, that's the construction materials, how they get paid, etc. These were so, two separate bids, right? These were two separate contracts. Uh, yeah. Two separate yeah. contracts, correct. Um, so in any event, what I'm saying is I need to revisit that. It's not a huge amount of money for that, but I need to revisit that document, just update the, you know, whatever has changed in the standard specifications, whatever has changed in the federal requirements, I need to revisit that document, make sure it's current with the current uh, regulations. So that we're ready to go when the time comes. So that's an so that's additional ten thousand. No, that, well, that's this the second amount of money we're talking. That's right. So that one twenty six, the five thousand on the one twenty six. Right. Yeah. That was the insurance. That's yeah. That's yeah, fine. So this is. I'm sorry. So this is the second contract that this for eighteen thousand. So right. We did it for eighteen. So you're saying you need an additional ten to the eighteen? Ten seven five. That's right. And I understand that's a large percentage, and that, so I understand that. So, so that's for you to review. From the stuff that happened before for you to re-review one of one of the exactly one of the steps is that review one of the steps spend 21 months of continuing through this right away process um, which has been a host of meetings that we've been having to get through this process 
And then there's a construction management plan, which again, federal monies require that we have a construction management plan mm -hmm. in place by the code of construction. Again, that needs to provide it to the DOT, Department of Transportation for review, approval, that been prepared. Again, Rick, what are our time constraints on this in terms of the grant and all that? Are we up against it? Are we approaching it? We got an extension. We got an extension. To what? I believe 2015 or 16. Wasn't it? Yeah, for the time of 2015. <laughs> yeah. So we might look at another 20,000 because of. Not, not, and no, not I, I, at this point, I would not be, again, to that point, I wouldn't be updating those tomorrow based on where we are. All that right, but my point is time however. is not critical on this at this point. I mean, we've gone this long. But I, I, Am I, I right? honestly can say right now we're in 1st of June. Right. We don't have time to go out to bid and get the bridge made this season. Right. It's being realistic. Okay. We get other work done, but that bridge... So how much of the 18,000 is, is, is used up then, so far? Well, that 95% of it. Probably, oh yeah, the vast majority of it. I've stopped building the town probably 15 months ago. Or so well, we haven't done anything though either, right? I mean, well, about, we've met once or twice a month. Okay. So on these great, this is typical, in other words, the need to review and, and specs change and the need to review, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that's <coughs> a lot of projects similar to this. But it's typical, again, to uh, the supervisor's concern is you want to prepare these things when you anticipate you're going to go, go to construction. <coughs> so I'm hired, if you hire me to design sure. a project, I'm not going to prepare well, the bid well, document. When you've got right-of-ways and you've got uh, uh, easements and all those things in place, uh, I think it's reasonable to assume that it's going to take uh, longer than you might anticipate. Shouldn't that be in? Shouldn't that be in the contract? Knowing that you, you state the FUD does make changes, and you know that three times a year, you sure. state that. So that, in my opinion, should be in there, as well as like, the time factor as well. I don't think the time factor. Is the time factor. I don't think so. That's my opinion. I think I'm in business too. Sure. If I contract something, if it's in a proposal, and I screwed up with the proposal, I eat it. That's, that's business. Understanding your position, it's a, it's a, it's a, a large mm -hmm. amount, but also for our taxpayers, it's a lot of, large amount to it. You're talking fifteen thousand uh, dollars or so, not in the quoted, you know, contract. I think you have to honor that, and I think going forward, your contracts will be probably written. Well, and I understand, <laughs> and so I take exception to it, as you said. <clears throat> you, I think you said made an error. You need to take. Well, mm -hmm. There's a number of things beyond our control, which have. Been, Vastly contributed to this. So I readily, and we do that all the time. If I screw up, I tell you to screw up, then we're going to eat it. That happens, it happens every visit, as you said, and I readily admit that. I, and then there's things beyond your control and the, to whatever business you're in, and you obviously too much, you, you try to get compensated for this. Right. Right. And, and that's uh, the request in this case. I, yeah, it just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem, you know, come back. I mean, I, I know you, you bet it, you know. Based on X and the time frame and stuff, but I just think it's this is after the fact, and uh, I, I just don't like it the way it looks. That's my opinion. When would the specs be frozen? I mean, they can't yeah. constantly <laughs> updating specs when you you started to. Oh yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, again, that was based on it says we go to construction in 2013 is what we were aiming for, and based on what the previous DOT deadlines were. And, and that's what they were prepared for at that point. So, so net net, we could face this a similar situation to this again between now. And well, no, again, as I indicated, Mr. Reynolds, I, I'm not going to update them tomorrow, and then OT they change again in, you know, in September. That, that's not going to happen. But again, I need to provide <coughs> adequate time for the Department of Transportation to review. That. I can't give them something, and, and you guys would be hollering if. We were in a position to go to construction, and I prepare a bid document in whatever magic amount of time, and send that out to DOT for review. And there's a number of months before I get that back, and I need to provide them adequate time to review and comment and approve the document before going to construction. I just got a so, question. Yeah, I, sure. Because um, I've been following the project, we knew we weren't going to construction, so I'm just I'm kind of confused of how 
almost all that money got eaten up though. I mean, were you, were, did you keep updating even that we weren't in construction? That's what was charged or? No, there was no update at that point. Yeah, and we did not know we were funded. In so, so just so I understand, the 18,000, how did that get eaten up so quick when there was nothing going, I mean? Again, we did. Well, no, there, there's a short portion. And Dave in. was actively involved calling to do follow-ups on securing the easements. He was dealing with uh, DOT. Um, we had the problem with the storm uh, washing out a good portion of the trail. That was last summer, correct? Yep. And there was a concern about it being rebuilt because uh, when we had the big storm in what August, Rick? Yes. Right, right. It took it took out the trail. The trail was, was gone. The trail was gone. So at that point, everything was on hold as to what was going to happen. Uh, then it was all rebuilt so that we can now put the trail in. That delayed us. Uh, we got the uh, appraisals uh, in, I think, in May or June. The state indicated that they wanted them done on a different form. Uh, they had to be all redone, and it took another five or six months for those to be redone. So if you look at the trail washing out and the uh, appraisals alone, that, that ate up probably eight or nine months of last year. Right, and, and this is exactly what Paul That's what I'm trying to say. You know, the board doing? knew that nothing was going to happen. Right. I don't know how anybody else didn't know because so, I knew, he knew, I think Dave knew, and I think Rich knew, and Jeff. I mean, we knew in 2012 this construction wasn't going to happen. How is it that nobody else knew? So how did, how did the We knew that up? we didn't have, excuse me, Paul, but sure. we knew we didn't have easements. We knew that the appraisals way back in the beginning were wrong and needed to be done. How was it that the board, who was not out there on the project, knew all this, but nobody else knew? I, and, I and if you did, hold on a second, right? And if you did know it, you know, I agree with Paul. I mean, if I go out to do a job on an audit and there's problems with the books, I tell the client, straighten out the books. When you got them straightened out, call me, I'll come back. Dave, and I'll do respect for your ability here, when you knew that, <laughs> Things weren't ready, and you should have known because appraisals weren't done, uh, uh, easements weren't received, right-of-ways weren't there. Forget about the storm we had, but there was a ton of things that were brought to the attention of this board, and, and if you had meetings, you should have known about. And at that point, you should have said, guys, I'm not going to put this together because you're not even ready to go out to bed. If I can just elaborate on the time frame. Right-of-way maps were completed in... August 2012. Anyway, maps were done. I think we're wondering that appraisals were in, initiated at that point in time. We're talking from August to December when appraisals were provided. First appraisals were provided to DOT, not done by us. Those required revisions. That took a, a period of months to get those appraisals Six revised. Months. That's not typical. I would not expect that appraisals would take six months. To, that's a that's a so one or two week time frame. So I need to prepare these documents. I wouldn't expect a six month time frame for appraisals. That's a, a couple of weeks to get that portion done, and then to complete the right away acquisitions with parties that have been spoken to in the past and knew the travels because it wasn't a surprise to them. And typically, we're on board with the project. So that's in the end of 2012-2013. So at that point, we did not know it was, gonna, was not going to go to construction in 2013. It was a very we were, When did we get that extension, Mike? <clears throat> we actually applied, received it in the end of 2012. We applied so we had the extension. We got the extension. How was it that nobody figured that maybe we weren't going to get construction done if we already had the extension in hand? Again, this is what is a little bit irritating, guys. Because we went out, we got the extension, and you're telling me you, you thought construction was going to happen in 2013. If that was the case, why the heck did we go out and get the extension? But again, you want to be able to bid the project so the contractor has time to procure precast. But we didn't for have you. things ready, and we knew that. We had things ready. You didn't, didn't have easements, Rick. You didn't well, have the right of way. Easement. Wait. The town highway department was ready to go. Lockner Engineering was ready to go. You might have been ready to go, but we didn't okay. have all the legal documents. So the acquisitions of this land doesn't normally take as long as it did. But it did. And you shouldn't have done this thing. You shouldn't have jumped the gun until it was done. That's what I'm telling you. I've been waiting for two years to I'm do this. I'm not saying that, Rick. What I'm saying is this stuff shouldn't have been done. 
because you're basically talking about so, redoing what's already been done because we didn't wait to get all this stuff and then say, okay, we've got all the easements, we've got all the right-of-ways, we've got all the land we need, now let's go out and bid it. And that's what should have happened. But then if we got the acquisitions and we weren't ready, we got to say we did get the land and we're not ready, we get blamed for not being ready. So we were ready to Guys, go. Guys, this project's been going on for 2008. <laughs> Who are we going to say you're not ready now, Rick? Come on. Okay? Well, we are. It's been how many? Since 2008. I honestly Are you worried about being called that you're not ready? I honestly thought last summer we'd be in construction. Just like again this summer. I'm ready to go. Well, I don't think anybody on this board thought we were going to be into construction last, last huh? year. And that's why we went out and got the extension, in all honesty. Okay? We knew we were having problems with the appraisals. We got those finally done. Everything was popping up. All of a sudden, we found pieces of land that we knew had to be there we didn't know about before. We were having uh, differences with right-of-ways. Now we had to change this around because Utica dropped out. I mean, all these things coming about, you got to sit back and say, whoa, guys, when you get your stuff done, you come and see me. I mean, there's, this thing has been one problem after another. I'm not saying you. I'm saying with right-of-ways, with you can see the Utica dropping out of this thing, going down, getting it revised with DOT, getting extensions. How do you even take a guess that we're going to be able to be go ready to go out the bid on this thing? I mean, that's a, to me, that's a big guess on your part. Seriously. Well, again, as Mr. Sherman indicated, appraisal should be started in August. Those typically have to take eight months, more than eight months, 12 months of prepare appraisals, let alone the right-of-way acquisitions themselves. In, if it's inadvertent that, okay, I anticipate a reasonable amount of time to do those things, I'm going to be prepared so you can go to construction in 2013, which again, we did anticipate that and was not in error to estimate that based on a typical time frame and even with this project. If I waited until every, all that stuff was wrapped up and said, okay, now Tom, I'm going to prepare this stuff, i got to take my period of time to prepare it in 2013 and prior to, you know, get an extension and clock's ticking, okay, they get your stuff done. I submit it to DOT. DOT says, well, we're going to review it when we review it, which may be one month, maybe two months, maybe four months. But they get back and I'm advising. And meanwhile, Mr. Sherman, someone say, Dave, where's the stuff? Why aren't you ready to go? So that's, and that's, and that's a very, both of those cases are very real. Where Lockton is being, question, why isn't this project going? I just got one more question. Um, for this 18, uh, aren't you the project engineer, though? Is it Lockner the project engineer, or no? I mean, I no, we didn't design the project. This no, time. what I'm saying is, aren't you, I mean, you're, for these for these numbers, aren't you really running the project, pretty much? I, I don't I don't see it on Rick's shoulders that, I, I mean, you're billing out hours here, right, to get to the 18,000, so, Aren't you running the project? Don't you talk to the appraisers? Don't you talk to the people that are doing the easements? I mean, I, I don't think that's really what Rick's responsibility is. I, I think it's more on, on what you're getting paid to do this for. So when you know, when you talk to the appraiser, I mean, he had to give you some kind of time frame. He couldn't say, well, you, you know, it's going to take a week and it took six months. So and those times, time frames would come and go correct. And I have correct. So I. Right, so All when right. you stop doing the work, like if he said, oh, it's going to take another three weeks when you hold back, or you just kept going through the process, so so then they would build oh, yeah, out all these hours? or Well, no, at that point, that's prepared. Because, again, this is early 2013, so they were prepared at that okay. point. I just... Well, you prepared them in March of 2013. You prepared the manual. Correct. You updated it in April or May, okay? Um, but we already had the extension, and we already knew there was problems. <clears throat> why, why prepare it? And that's why I can't get over. We had the extension. We had three years to go on it. We knew we had problems then. Um, why go ahead and prepare the, the documents if, if we had the extension and we knew there was problems? That's what I don't understand. And. and I don't think there's, I gotta be honest with you, Dave, I don't think there's anything you're gonna tell me that's gonna explain that. Because I, I'm sitting here wondering why you would continue to prepare these specs when everybody else is, is knowing we're not going out 
to start construction in 2013. You know, and even then, you know, you get the, the specs done in May. You know, Rick's telling me now it's too late. Why wasn't it too late in May of 2013? But yet you, you revised them and we're ready to go. The product still needs to be bid in advance for the contractor to secure materials. But what year were you bidding it for when you got these done in, in May of 2013? Were you bidding for the 2013 year or the 2014 year? Oh, we bid in 2013. That doesn't necessarily, and the contractor bridges get built. They, the bridges get started in November all the time. If the contractor could start in November based on weather conditions, then and the town wished we would do that. And the, the contractor requires, depending on what the suppliers, what their demand is for concrete, concrete beams, precast concrete, concrete beams, that could be two to six months in advance for, before the contractor starts. They need to bid it, have time to secure their materials to go to construction. So yes, there's a, there's a lead time for both the DOT to review and approve things. There's a lead time for the contractor to bid it, lead time for the town to award the bid to the contractor and the contractor ordered materials. Some of the materials sure if you go to Hanson or I heard you pick up your stone. Other things, a precast concrete beam is not that simple. It could be a month, two months, or six months. So you pretty so, much got everything pretty much done. I mean, you're just going in and critiquing it a little bit right now at this point, right? Yeah, again, those things are relative. I mean, use the term relatively minor to update the bid doc, but it still needs to be right. the legal, the, 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 the requirements that the federal government FHWA has for their funds. There's a number of things that have to be included in the documents. There's a number of things that town has to do as part of the federal, um, as part of your construction. Um, I need to make sure that it's current relative to those. Um, same thing with the specifications on how, what materials can be used, how they get paid, those change. Um, again, I have been meeting numerous times with uh, the attorney and the department heads to. <coughs> facilitate getting this writing process completed so we can get to construction. And that's part of what this uh, request was. Again, I uh, indicated previously, um, we don't take these things lightly. If we, when we submit a proposal, we, it's not, we don't nickel and dime. We try not to nickel that well. We don't try, we avoid it. Um, we take it to heart that when there's an extra, when there's a supplement, it's, it's a valid request. Uh, doesn't mean that we it's not challenge or we need to answer questions we need to justify of course we do that's as a taxpayer as a board member that's what you demand of, of people and that's fair um, again I I don't want to apply this invoice to the town it's well over here uh, and I again I just request the town to consider submitting I did um, just with the people I was working with I, I questioned whether this would be a fair request before I put it in um, the people I was working with the town thought it was a fair request and I said okay I, I need to do this for protection of our firm and to make sure we're delivering what the town is requesting let me ask you a question on the contract here for uh, engineering services, not the inspection, I see some of these, like the railroad crossing here, and that's done. Right? I mean, yes. that's the one yes. shot deal. Preparation and construction management, uh, uh, that's a one shot deal, that's done. That's mostly done. Enter into force account agreement and right of entry agreement with New York State, Susquehanna, and, and Western Railroad. That's generally done. The town will have to read. Same thing as what we had to enter the right of entry permit. We'll need to update that, but it's right. in place. And then the bid manual is done. I mean, Excuse obviously me. you're saying you need to update it. And then the other two items here, which I guess are subject to those things, I, I, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, except for maybe an update on the manuals, uh, to me are not subject to time delays. You know, if you got a time delay, you don't work. Uh, right-of-way acquisition and clearance certificate. Uh, 
New York State DOT use and occupancy permit application. Um, you know, and, and I go, and you're having all these meetings, but then I get back to this thing and it says assumptions and exclusions, and it says the town is responsible for, for preparing right away and easement maps, negotiations with property owners, and final compensation. So at the point where we're doing all the negotiation, why are you going to these meetings? What are you doing at these meetings every week? The right away, uh, we're not, because we're not, it's not purchased yet. So we need to make sure things are moving so that the right of way is in the town's hands. The you're pushing the attorneys to get it done, is that what you're telling me? We're working jointly to get it done. Well, what are you doing um, specifically? I know what he's doing. I know what Christine Krupa did. What are you doing to get it done? Again, I'm trying to make sure that something is being done. The One of the property owners being approached with an attorney wanted to know about what is the, what's the impact. We, and we had the right way laid out last year for the property owner. Currently, whether time passed, he forgot, or previous discussion with the town, he forgot, wasn't fully aware of how he was being impacted. He wanted to see, well, exactly what is being done. So we prepared some graphics. Um, I, I had the request of attorney. What is being done? I mean, um, you get a right away, you look at a map, I mean, that's what's being done. I mean, it's very difficult exactly. to well, But he wanted to see more, wanted a further understanding of, of what the impact of his property was. I mean, he didn't started realize he was losing crazy. parking. He wanted to see how it was going to affect his parking mm -hmm. lot, wanted it staked out. Um, and at some point, there was a discussion about uh, the town conveying the land that he was his conveying. But how does that, how does that, besides staking it out, what does it have to do with him? Well, I think Dave went out to show. Yeah, we facilitated the, he requested the information. We had to provide and show him what was being done. The survey right, stakes so. were put in. And, and, and okay, I said, the survey stakes were right, put we in. For additionally. But other than that, it's all legal work. I mean, not for anything, but once you got the stakes in, I could go short time the crate where the property line's going to be. He wanted to see what, how he was being affected. And so we had to show him how it was being affected. We had to show the plans. He wasn't fully aware of how he was being impacted. He wasn't realizing he was losing a role of parking. Uh, he was probably made aware of it in the past, but either forgot or, well, or didn't fully understand. I'm not sure which, but. We had a coordinate with Mr. McCraith, um, the attorneys, and, and to make sure he fully understood. And once he understood, then he had additional requests of which we were involved in to try to make sure that this process would move forward. You're right, because I said, well, call so-and-so instead, but we had to, you know, we were working with all parties to, to secure the process. So basically, with very little left, you you basically exhausted the original contract, according to your bills. Sure. Yeah. As we said, those documents have been prepared. And and I'm to assume that since you've done this, any additional expenditures, costs incurred are going to be due to these meetings. Which again, I, I don't really understand. No offense, but what the necessity of you attending these meetings was. Well, isn't there? <coughs> if you could uh, just briefly tell us again about recapping and uh, your anticipated uh, communications with DOT and, and how that's going to. What else have you got left to do? With, with everything on the contract done or substantially done, what's going to happen now going forward? Once the right of way is fully secured, um, it, the DOT has approved that it's been secured properly, so there's a right of way clearance certificate that needs to be provided to DOT. And there's a Mr. cost. Scully has there's a cost to that for us. For I you? He, he, I, so he has a yeah, pretty well completed copy of that, so he has that. We'll have to get so that done. into deal. That, that well, will be done. They have to be sent in with the last recorded deed. Two of them have been sent in. 
All right. But well, let's, let's make this clear. What do you actually have to do? Right. You, not saying. her, not any, not this board. What do you have to do? Correct. So that has to be done. Um, the. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I heard it's already done. What do you? It's not 100 percent done. It needs to go into DOT. But okay, Mr. Clay yeah. will do that. So the bid document needs to be needs to be reviewed. It reviewed relative to the current federal requirements and the New York State DOT standard specification. Which we've already done once, am I correct? But it was prepared, and now I need to update it relative to the current, whatever the current. So you're updating the document. Well, it was updated once. Exactly, it's an update. Okay, it was okay. updated once. Right. Okay. So you're not starting from scratch. No, no, not at all. Right. Okay. So that's that. That's that document, and then the other document is the construction management plan. Again, so that will just need that's to be an update. Basic. Yeah. That's an update. It's prepared. It's an update. It's not a. Now what is that being updated not for? Free. Again, there's a whole stove. standards, DOT standards or federal requirements need to make sure that during construction are followed. Isn't so that, that the same thing as, is, aren't those the same regulations for updating the, the, the bid They document? may or may not be because there's a number of things that relate to specifically inspection that are not in the bid document. There's a number of things during the process that <coughs> during the construction it needs to be followed which is not part of the big Okay, You and I talked about this last week, Dave. In, in, okay, so there may be reasons why New York State or the federal government comes out with changes two or three times a year as to who you could buy things from, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the bit changes. But now on this, what are they changing? Okay, so those things would probably be incorporated in this construction manual. What else do they change in the rules here, halfway through the game, that you're going to have to incorporate and change in this construction manual? Such as what? Okay, because of the standard specifications, which tell you what materials you can use, where you can get them, that can translate into the construction processes and the type of inspection or testing that you need to do. But that's in the bid manual. Well, it's not. I mean, it's not. No. When, when you put this out, this bid, don't you have to say that we can, we will not buy this material if you get it from so and so, or don't you have to? Sure, yeah, that? yeah, that portion is in there, but right. there's other processes that aren't processes aren't necessarily spelled out in the bid document for the contractor. So in other there's words, other the state that, says that you have to do something specific, and during the year they change that. Give me an example. I guess I'm confused. It could be a, a material placement. If a specification changes for a particular product that a contractor needs a place for a project, whether it's a bridge component or a road component or a trap component, that item number for which that gets paid, paid under may change. The spec may change. So the bid document would bid identify the wood that this contractor gets paid or, or is going to bid this so and so item, item 1000. Right. Make up. Well, that's why he knows, and that's what he needs to adhere to. Well, there's another part of that that may translate to what we need to do or what the town needs to do or what we need to do with a testing firm to make sure that that material is tested properly during the placement, whether it's compaction or whether it's a concrete test. Wait, it if it's in the bid spec, won't you be testing for that on inspection? Oh, exactly. And that's my point. And that's part of the what goes into construction management plan. So I, I don't make the rules, we follow them. No, we I, I follow understand them. what you're saying, but you're charging me to put it in the bid spec, and then you're saying because now we have to inspect it, you're going to charge me again to put it into the construction manual? Again, I, these are documents required by the state, required by the feds. I, I, we don't, I'm not double, we don't make anything that we don't have to make. I don't choose just to do it because all day wants it. But at this point, I will receive, I'm going to receive the request. We will eat it, we'll do it, and we'll do what we need to do. Thank you. Any, thanks, Dave. Any more questions, Board? No. What do you want to do? Here? What do you said he's going to eat? We'll eat it. He's going to eat it. We're we'll receiving. That's why I don't have any questions. Yeah. <laughs> I had a couple more. All right. Moving on. I think that was good. Um, all right. Um, I mean, you can't judge me. True. Okay, we've got, uh, I don't have anything 
left except for one item in executive. Danny, you got something? Well, I was going to go over the, the audit. Okay, why don't you go over that? You got a summary there? Yeah. Yeah. Passed uh, right. I sent you guys last John, week the email yeah. of the uh, 2013 audit, and uh, I've summarized the 54 pages of the audit into two pages of, of you know some key highlights and key stats from the audit. So we broke it down into four different sections and. On the right-hand column, you'll see where I've referenced the audit report as to where I've you know, gotten the information so you can go back and make sure I'm accurate in what I'm telling you. Um, the first item, as far as internal controls and financial reporting, is one of the things I'm most happy about is that there's no, the auditors found no new uh, internal control weaknesses <coughs> and no new findings. Uh, meaning that our, you know, our accounting procedures and our internal controls are adequate and up to snuff. And all, all prior year findings that were found in prior years have been uh, addressed and cleared to the satisfaction of the auditors, except for the one item that has to do with the uh, fixed asset history, which we've talked about quite a bit. And that would be, would be a kind of an insurmountable task to go back and get all that history in the system. We are, you know, going on a going forward basis, keeping track of and accounting for all new fixed asset acquisitions and whatnot. So it's in every audit, am I correct? Pretty much. Well, yeah, asset yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. And eventually, that will go away just by the nature of the fact that those assets would be considered fully depreciated and gone. Right. Uh, the next section I looked at and thought was important to speak about was the town's financial position at the end of the year, which is kind of just a snapshot <coughs> at any given date and time of you know what uh, the town's financial position is. Um, at the end of the year, on a town-wide basis, we had uh, $3.6 million in cash. In prior year, same time frame, we had $2.9 million, so we've increased our cash by 7 thousand. General fund uh, has a cash position of 1.5 million and general fund meaning um, general whole town, general part town and police. And the sewer fund cash position is 1.1 million. I guess the more important aspect of financial position is the fund balances which everybody kind of talks about you see in the, in the papers. On a town-wide basis, our fund balance at the end of 2013 was $4.75 million, which was up $2.7 million from last year. General fund, general whole town again, general park town and police had a fund balance of $2 million, which was up $700,000. And the sewer fund, the fund balance was $1.8 million, which was up $340,000. In, in a nutshell, all the overall fund balance of the town, excluding capital and mitigation, was up nine hundred thousand from last year, <coughs> fund balance wise. All right, and then down to the next bullet item: the town, the revenues and expenditures summary for two thousand thirteen. I, I looked at a couple different things. I looked at actual versus budget. On a town-wide basis, <clears throat> our budget for the overall year was 13.85 million. Our actual revenues actually came in at 14.5, so we exceeded our budget by 650,000. Our actual expenditures <coughs> came in lower than budget, 13.3 million, so I a positive variance of 550,000 there on a town-wide basis. And I've got the same statistics that are again for general fund. I threw in highway, park, town, and sewer fund. Overall, uh, you know, our revenue seemed to exceed budget, and our expenditures we, we came in a little bit under budget. And the reason for our fund balance increase. And then I also just threw in here too uh, the revenue expenditure as it relates to you know looking at 2013 versus 2012. Uh, Townwide, 2013 revenue was up 400k compared to last year. Expenditures, 
were uh, down 300,000, so there's a positive variance there. So on a town-wide basis between revenues and expenditures from last year, we have a positive variance of like 700,000. And then uh, general fund, same kind of analysis. Um, our revenues were up 100,000, our expenditures were down 100,000. The last thing I threw in here, um, kind of for your informational purposes, Pat and I have been talking about you know long range planning, looking at capital project planning, and and of course looking at our debt. So I, I, I kind of threw in here for informational purposes at this point uh, what our 15 year debt schedule looks like, and when certain uh, bonds will be paid off are noted down below. <coughs> You see a big drop off in 2019. Um, and if you look at the total debt, you know, debt service column over to the right. But again, that's in here for informational purposes. A lot of the, the debt information is, is contained in the financial report. Um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I don't know if you have any specific questions if you looked at the report. I you know this is really a top sided overview of what happens. Good job. Board, any questions for that? Good. And the mitigation fees are... I don't have anything. Okay. okay. All summary. funds excluding capital and mitigation. So that's not in here, right? No. Okay. Do you any information on that? No, not that's right. Good. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Thanks. Dan. <coughs> Okay, if there's nothing else, uh, I do have one uh, matter with regards to executive session. It has to do with uh, contract negotiations. Uh, and I had a report on the Kessler litigation. Okay. So with that, uh, if I could have a motion to go to executive session. Make, make a motion. Second by Paul, make a motion. Second by Jim. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. What happened to the uh, public comment session? session? Not here. Thank you, Jack. Chief? Yep. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah.